So there's a famous dispute, Beis Hillel or Beis Shammai, in terms of, everyone knows in Tu Bishvat, the question is when is Rosh Hashanah we learn, when is the new year for trees? So Beis Shammai's opinion is, we're two weeks late, it was Rosh Chodesh Shvat. We, be, we observe, it's the, well, whatever we actually do, but the Rosh Chodesh Shvat is the new year Rosh Hashanah we learn us. And Beis Hillel disagrees and says, Tu Bishvat Yigiyach Ali Lanos, that today, yesterday, on the, on the 15th of Shvat, that is when we, that's the new year for trees, and that's when we observe and celebrate it. So the Gemara goes on and says, what's the reason for Beis Shammai? Why does Beis Shammai say that it begins Rosh Chodesh Shvat? So the Gemara says, because the majority of rain has fallen, hopefully not, but the majority of rain has fallen in Eretz Yisrael and basically everything's ready to go now. And therefore, by Rosh Chodesh Shvat, we begin, that's the Rosh Hashanah Lilanos. And the Gemara actually doesn't tell us about Beis Hillel. It doesn't give us what, so what does Beis Hillel hold? There's a Me'iri over there who brings down that Beis Hillel's opinion is what happens on Tu Bishvat is when the fruits actually start, whatever it means to grow, but the fruits themselves already begin to start growing. So there's a, there's a fundamental machok, it's Beis Hillel Beis Shammai, whether it's Rosh Chodesh Shvat or Tu Bishvat, and the, and, and the issue seems to be that Beis Shammai, well the Gemara tells us Beis Shammai, you go by the when Rov Gishamim, and Beis Hillel goes by when you actually have the fruit. So this seems to be, there's a beautiful piece in Rav Zevin in the Orla Halacha. He has a lot of interesting um, shtickles. He has something on Mishpat Shylock. Like if you have, he says, what would happen if you went to a basin? Are you allowed to give up a pound of flesh? What would happen? He goes over, and he has different, different um, articles and different things, and then he has one article. He has, Be'inyan Machlokes Be'isil Be'ishamai. So he goes through, I'm not going to go through all of them, he has a whole list of Machlokes and Be'isil Be'ishamai, how he wants to show that they're all with Shittason, that we see that, that we see Be'ishamai is consistent with their view and Be'isil with their view. So what does he show? And then we'll give different examples of what he's saying. He writes that the Yisodis, Beis Shammai is always looking at the potential. It's always getting down to the root of the root of the issue, and Beis Hillel is dealing with the reality. What's in front of What's in front of me? So, for instance, I'm we're going to be reading it this week, the Aseris Hadibros. We're going to be reading the popularly, you know, a misnomer called the Ten Commandments, but it's Aseris Hadibros, and we're going to be reading it this this coming Shabbos Yisro. So there's a famous Rav Sajigo, and the famous question they ask is, why are we standing for the Aseris Hadibros? Bishop, if you go with the Ramaz Chumra from the Maram Rimberg and you stand all the time, covered at Torah, it's no question. But the question is, why that, and the Ramam felt very, apparently felt very strongly against it. He said, those who stand up for the Aseris Hadibros, it, you're a heretic, you're showing that Aseris Hadibros are more important than the rest of the Torah. So why are you standing for the Aseris and Dibros? So, the, so maybe we'll come back to the Rav's answer later, but the answer Rav Sajigon gives is that basically, know that 6 plus 1 plus 3 equal 10. And the Aseris had Dibros, in fact he wrote a whole Sefer on it, I'm sure some are more of a push than others, but he shows how each of the 613 mitzvahs fit under the ten the Aseris and Dibros. In other words, if you get to the root of it, you'll see it in the Aseris and Dibros, you see all the 613 commandments. Where do you see not to murder? So, so, oh, no, so he says, so where do you see, let's say, not to embarrass someone publicly? So he says, that's on the Los Yertzah. Where do you find Pesach? That's on the Zoch Rishon HaShavah, so Kacho, Sanctif. And if you go through, some obviously will be harder to fit in others, but you go, it's a whole safer, I never saw it, but it's quoted where he goes through all the different 613 mitzvahs, and he shows how each one fits in, but he goes down to the core. Along similar lines, we also find by um, the Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noach, like there's a discussion among the Rishonim, Achronim, is a non-Jew, obligated in tzedakah, for instance, 
or is he obligated in kibbutz of the aim, in honoring um, the parents? So, so there's a discussion among the Rishonim. So if someone say we see from they say that we see that a non-Jew is chayav. We see from Noah the way the kids treated Noah and other rayas. Um, the Rambam brings down that as well that they say someone's a gear and they convert. So even though he's not, even though Gershon is guy, you could cut the Jehovah Adam, you still have to treat that person like he's your father. You know, these people shouldn't think, uh, you know, like Louis Farrakhan does that Judaism is a gutter religion. All of a sudden, he's Jewish, he doesn't treat it. So obviously, we see from different rayas that it seems to be a non Jew is chayas. So that is a discussion. But keep it out of the aim, it seems to be that a non Jew is chayas. So the question is, why is he chayev then? Where's, what's the makor? We, no, we normally assume a non-Jew's obligation is based on the Sheva Mitzvah's B'nai Noah. So I, didn't, I haven't seen Kivra Ve'em in the Sheva Mitzvah's B'nai Noah. So then, well, it depends how deep you look. So that's how, so the different approaches to the question. So some approach is that it's in there, you just got to look hotter. So people have different suggestions. Some Achorim suggest it's based on it's, we know, first let me tell you what the seven minutes of the Noah are. So, so the way I remember them is the big three, the three things that you have to give up your life for, Gil Arayas, Ritzicha, etc. And then, Aleph Eiz Gimadal, and Eber Menachai, tearing them off a live animal, Birkas Hashem, euphemism, cursing God, Gezo and Dinim. So, some want to say it falls under the base, the Birkas Hashem. What does Birkas Hashem have to do with Kibbut Avayim? Because the famous Gemara and Kedushim we're all familiar with, that we all have three creators, mommy, daddy, and God, not necessarily in that order, but we all have three creators. And that's why the go into, um, that's why Kibbut Avayim is the perfect transition. It's, because the first, because why was it given on two tablets? So the first category is Be'adam Lamakom, and the next five are Be'adam Lachavero. So I, Kibbut Avayim is in the wrong spot. Why is it doing on the, on the honoring of God. The answer is we just have to rephrase it. The first five has to do with mitzvahs to our Creator. Uh, as the Minchas Tinach and others point out, the mitzvah of Kibbut Avim is a unique mitzvah in the sense you have aspects of Ben Adam Lamakam and aspects of Adam Lachaver. They are your kids are people, parents are people, but they're also your creators and you have to treat them appropriately as well. So Kibbut Avim, they say, it's under, basically, so you, by mistreating your parents, it's kind of like a violation of Birkas Hashem, and therefore, it's in, in, that's why it goes Chayev. Or I'll just try a different route. They say it's under a different commandment. It's under Dinim. It's a setting, the whole Machlok is Rambam Ramban, how comprehensive is the mitzvah of Dinim. Is it just like, you know, basic societal laws, or like the Ramanas, no, it's much more comprehensive, it's like their own Chosha Mishpat. However, whatever the, whatever the Maskana is, Dinam is a societal law. So we know that one of the most logical commandments, doesn't mean people are going to keep it, but one of the most logical commandments there are is honoring one's parents. And therefore, it's just a society that doesn't honor the parents, you know, a society which is in trouble. We don't have to look too far today with the dysfunctional families and all that, that we know where to, you know, that's why we're in a mess today. So that's what they point out, that basically it's under Dinam, that what greater, and what if someone, you can't, even though you do have some wackos, but generally if you, if you honor your parents, it's a good idea you weren't honoring elders, and you'll treat other people in society. So if you can't treat your parents properly, then you're unlikely to keep, to treat other people. So again, it's the same mahalach that really, Kibra Avayim is in the seven mitzvahs B'nai Noach. It's just how deep you have to go to find it. Like Rav, like Rav Sadja going said by the Ten Commandments. Parenthetically, no, there's another answer of the Drashat Haran, not with this Yisrael, but I'll tell it to you anyway, we're on the topic, that the Ran writes, and no, you're right. Kibra Avayim is not in the seven mitzvahs B'nai Noach. None of this inclusion. I, so why are they chayiv then? So the Ran gives us another principle. He wants to add to the seven mitzvahs. That not... The seven mitzvahs of Noah are the minimum. And then again, again, what it means is a separate chair, but he basically writes different discussions what he means, but any basically mitzvah sikhlis, any common sense mitzvah, something you can figure out on your own, that also, menshlokai, being a mensch, that's something a guy says, true, it's not one of the seven mitzvahs of Noah, but 
a guy also has a brain, he can figure out what makes sense, and therefore he's obligated in Kiva Ve'em. The question is, that goes against the Gemara in Kedushin. But the Gemara in Kedushin says, the famous Gemara with Dama ben Nisina, that the Gemara, whole long case, different versions of what he gave up, how much, what it was, but ultimately Dama ben Nisina didn't want, didn't want to wake up his father, and he, again, he didn't lose his father's money, his father would have killed him, he lost his own money. He was willing to live, and then he got the Paraduma, other things, he ended up getting it back. But when the Gemara says, look how far we have to go in Kibbutz of Aim. I always like, you know, I always paraphrase that statement in my own life, look how far one has to go. I say, I'm willing to visit my parents in the Catskills in the summer, mm -hmm. and next month I'm willing to go to Florida and visit them in Florida. That's how far. But the Gemara says, how far do you have to go for Kibbutz of Aim? If Dava ben Nesina, who wasn't obligated, and yet he did, he went so far of this, how much more so every Jew is Chayev. So what do we see from this Gemara? A non-Jew isn't Chayev in Kibbutz of Aim. So how do you reconcile with the Drushes Haran? So the answer, no, it's no Kasha. What did the Ran say? Any logical thing, you're right, not to punch your father in the face, not to curse him out, not to humiliate, humiliate him, that everyone knows you shouldn't do. But I would say it's common sense that if your father would lose, if you or even if you would lose $10 million or to wake him up, I think most fathers would say, wake me up and you know, give me, and give me a percentage or whatever. Yeah. But it's logical, so, that, so that's what the Gemara, that's how far, by, by, by a guy it's only the common sense keep it out of the aim, but a Yid, it's a much more, it's a much more comprehensive Chiyam. But either way, that's what they brought down, that the same concept as with Sajagon, that it was, that the six plus one plus three um, is, is, um, is inclusive, but once I might as well tell you the Rav's chat also, why do we, so that's what he says, so why do we stand for this error, that the Rosh of Sajagon says? He says, we stand because it's not that we're giving more credence to the Aseris Adibros. We're standing because it's a representative quality. You're right. If you just stand there yeah, because you think these are 10 of the 613 mitzvahs, then it's apikarsis. You have no right to sit down. Don't give any more chashiva. But, but if you're standing up because it's, it's representative quality, that, that he thinks perhaps maybe that's why the minute developed is standing up. However, that might, be, that might work for Rav Sajagon, but it would work for the Rambam, because the Rambam, uh, the Rambam writes that, I assume the Rambam knew the Yisoda of Sajigo, and either he knew it, he didn't like it, or either way, but either way he said, the Rambam never, doesn't answer the Rambam, the Rambam says, you can't stand up, to, you know, it's happy curses to stand up for the Aseret Sadiv, so how do we answer up the Rambam? So Rav Salvechik had a different explanation, he explained, based on something else, the Magadar Rambam and others bring down different minhagim, of how you read the Aseris and Dibros. Basically, in you know, North America, both shows I've been in, that they, they always read it Tam Elyon. And there's a basic difference between Tam Tachton and Tam Elyon is basically, let's say you have, you have three commandments in one Pusuk. So if you read it by commandment, also you stop. <coughs> or you read it by the Psukim, you go by the Psukim. So how Minig generally is, every show I've been in anyway, is you read Tam Elyon. However, the Magadar, in Israel apparently that's not so true, also among Svardim it's not true. So in Israel it's much more um, diverse there in terms of the Minhagam for the Aseris and Dibros. So the Magadar Ram quotes an interesting minute, some make a distinction between reading it on Parshas, we know we read it three times a year, Parshas Yisrael, Parshas Veschanan, and Shruas. And Shruas. So some want to make a distinction that we, when we read it in Yisrael Veschanan, we read it Tam Tachton. We read it Tam Elyon when we're on Shvua. So the Rav, he wasn't, a, he was just giving Pshad. What's the Pshad in this in this Shita? And with this, he wants to explain the Rambam. That so, what's the Pshad when you're reading it this coming Shabbos, Parshas Yisro of Eschanan? You're reading it B'Torah Parsha Shavua. You Tam Tachton. So you have a standing up. What are you talking? You can't stand up. Why is it any different than how you read last week? But if you're reading it Tam. But on Shavuot, which is a Zeichel of Maimon Har Sinai, we're not just reading it with Torah's Parsha Shavua, it's a reenactment of Maimon Har Sinai, so therefore, that, that's, that's, why we, that's why we stand. In fact, that's what the Rav explained, we mentioned a couple of months ago, when we were speaking about the, 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 who wrote the last day Psukim in the Torah. So it's a whole discussion, the Gemara, Rabbi Yehuda, 
it was um, Yehoshua who wrote it, and Rav Shimon said Moshe. So, and we went through a kosher or two on it. But what, what was the Rambam passing like, Rav Shimon? That Moshe wrote the last day psukim, but because of the Dema. He wrote it differently, whatever Dema means, silently, and here the Gura has his own explanation. But he, he did it differently. So what's, so, so, what's, so what's the Pshat there? So the Rav explained also based on the Rambam, he said, so what's the Pshat? Why don't we read Kriyat HaTorah? It's Zeichel HaMayim and Har Sinai. So what are we reading it? We read the Torah the way it was given. So we have to go back to the way it was given originally. So Moshe Rabbeinu, when he got the whole Torah, Moshe Kosev Medaber. Moshe said it, and then he gave it over. But by the last day, Psukim Kosev Vedema, he didn't give it over. So therefore, it's a Zeichel Maimon Har Sinai, the last day, Psukim. Moshe didn't talk about his death publicly, so he taught it privately. So it's the same idea the Rav has about the Kriyas. That's the whole general, the whole Kriyas the Torah is Zeichel, is to remember Maimon Har Sinai. But by the Torah of Dibros, he focuses more on that shita, not that he passes like that shita, but giving the lambdas and what what's the distinction between parsha shavua versus so he so someone to say what's the pet the if you look at the Rambam, he never mentions anything about Tam El Yon. So is so you know we bring geographical proofs in the Rambam, where the Rambam puts something tells you a lot about the nature of the Lacha. And what the Rambam doesn't say also tells you a lot. So the fact the Rambam doesn't talk about it so they assume the Raman doesn't hold from it. There is no one with Tom Elyon. You always read Tom Tachton. He didn't go for Tom Elyon. So the effort fits in. The Raman, this is the Rav explaining, the Raman always read the Torah Tom Tachton. Like, like the Torah is far you always read it normally. So if you stand up for the Torah said Dibros, you're giving credence more to the other place. But the rest of the Torah, but, but, the, but our minig is, we're not going against the Ramam. We're going against the Ramam that we read a Tom Elyon. But even the Ramam would agree, if you read a Tom Elyon, then it's okay to stand because you show you're not reading it in the classical uh, parasha. So that's how the two reasons, either based on our Sajagon, that we stand for its representative quality of the Aserah Sadibros, or because the Gaurav said that, this, that it's um, basically the Ramam when we did Tom Tachto, but we do it Zeichel Lomayim and Arsinai, and therefore, our meaning is Tam Elia, therefore we don't go like the Rambam, but the Rambam only, only did Tam Takhto. How, yeah. how can the Rambam say that it's wrong to stand, to differentiate between the Seos and the Shako, the Tarakula? At Halsina they were differentiated, they were separated, they were given special status, and it specifically says that they were standing. So, uh, how can he say that you, you mustn't differentiate? They were differentiated. No, he th he's being he um, the Ramam's mode and then obviously you know, assuming like we are that he was it was given the Aserah had Dibro, so at and then and then however Moshe transmitted later on, they and they, they might have had a special status then, but the Ramam's talking to Gabi now Today, Kriya Sato, like we have, we say if one is no difference if you're missing a letter in the Kasaras Hadibros, you're missing a letter in Bereshis, you're missing a letter in Devarim. Today, we in many halachas we treat like it's a puzzle Sefer Torah. We don't say the separate halachas for the Kasaras Hadibros, and that you're right. Obviously, in, in that, and that's what the Rav Sajagon is based. You're taking Rav Sajagon's approach that he's saying it, it represents more than just the Kasaras Hadibros, and it's okay. That's, that's the approach. But the Rav is working with the Mahalach, the, the first letter in, in Bereshis, the ba, you know, from the base to the end, is, you know, basically, once now the Torah is put in, it could have been before maybe Moshe codified and wrote it, we, you know, we could discuss, but now that we talk about a Kedusha Sefer Torah, or, or well, we don't make any distinctions between them. Um, you know, the, the question, what do we do? Why do we stand for Yashir? Other things we do, you know, that's why maybe they say we read it a different tune. Shira, you know, but... But even Rav Sajid Gona, I think, if I remember correctly, he, he's, he's, he's not saying that L'Chathchila should stand. He, wasn't he saying that at once there was already... Wasn't, they brought him the question. Once there was already a minute, now what do you do? No, right, he was just... So then he was trying to find a justification. Right, he was just... Could, otherwise it's a, a, a minute. Right, he was so. answering up the kash on the round. Why, why it's not us to stand. Right, well, he didn't... But he, well, I don't know if he would have said if there was no minute stand. Mm -hmm. Right, he was just saying his... 
but he was giving basis. There isn't. There is some basis for Vinnick to stand for that, and not the rest. And I'm not saying you should or yeah. you shouldn't. I don't know. Maybe he held you should stand all the time. Maybe he felt you should sit all the time, right? But he wasn't actually saying look at Chilot to stand outside the Kuda, right? So, um, so getting you had a question. Or, yeah, so getting back. So we so we said that that basically that we see by that Sarah said Dibros of Sajigon or the Shem Mitzvah Bnei Noach, you get down to the Kuda. So that's along the lines of Zevin wants to write the Yisod of Beishamai. He doesn't talk about these examples, but in terms of that Beishamai always gets down, always looks at the potential, gets down to the root of the issue. And Beishamai more, as, we, as it says, you know, as it says, um, as we'll get to, the Machokas, where the Shamayim was created first, the Aretz, that Beishamai says Shamayim, the real world is Shamayim. It's all about spirituality. And Beishamai says it's true, one, you know, when we get to Olam Haba and that, but right now we live in Olam Hazet, we got to deal with the realities of this world. But, but we'll give a, a couple of um, examples in the Gemara is where Machokas uh, Beis Hillel Beis he wants to say it's, it sees that Beis gets down to the Nakuda, while Beis Hillel deals more on a, on a pragmatic level. So I'll give a couple of examples. So one is, I think it's a mission in Uxin, he brings down, when did the fish be, be a macabre? Meimah tai dog and macabre el tuma. In other words, the luck is when it's a fish, it's a bal chai, it's not macabre el tuma. But when fish becomes food, then it can be macabre el tuma. So the question is at what point does it go from fish to, do we call a fish to food? As people always say, you know, I love fish, you know, but they're actually, they don't really love themselves, not the fish. You know, so, <laughs> but, so what's the shot here? So, Beishamai says, Misha Yasudu. When you got them in the, even though they're moving around, they're running around with the, with the fish, whatever, but they're alive, but they're stuck in the net, that's it. They're dead right now, they're considered food in the macabre tumor at that point. And basically it says, no, be shown your musu. Not, it's not enough, they're out of the net, they have to die first. So again, so be, so be shabby is going down to the, the potential that, basically that's it, they're stuck in the net, whether it's going to be another 10 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever long it takes, I don't know. A minute, basically, it's all made love, it's, it's like a mud's dummy, basically that's it. And basically it says, no, it's true they're going to die soon, but I deal with the reality of right now. Right now, Bashir Husham, I deal with the reality right now, and therefore, I'm the Nama Kabul tomb until afterwards. Or another example he brings down is the Gemara in Brachas. The Nintaf Nunvav, the Mishnah. We do it every Saturday night, Havdola. And not only do Havdalah, but we do the Havdalah ala Eish. We make the blessing on the fire. So it's a machokis in the Mishnah between Beisil and Beishamai. What's the Nusach HaBracha on Havdalah on the, on the, on the Eish? So, so we know what Beisil says, Bore Mora Eish. The Bracha we make, that's Beisil. What does Beishamai say? In the past, Shabara, it's Moor Eish. It's in the past and it's singular. So what's the so what's in the kudos hamachokas between Beisil and Beishamai? Whether they make bore Moor Eish or Shabara Moor Eish? So the villain the Gon in the Shno Selio they bring down. He says the same thing. He brings because what is Beishamai? Beishamai goes to the potential. He, who was the first Boy Scout? Adam Harishon. He made the first fire. Every fire goes back. That gave the potential for all fires in the whole world. And any time you go with a bara, more go back to the original, it's one. It's sort of in one, and Beisil says, no. I see in front of me, it looks a little orange, yellow, red, it's flickering. I see different shades of fire. Bore more age. I'm dealing with what I see in front of me while Beishamai goes down to the root, to back to the where it originally was. Shabara Maor. So it's in the past and it's in the singular. A third example is um, is another another Machokis of Shammai and Hillel in terms of how do you get ready for Shabbos. So how do you prepare for Shabbos? So Shammai used to go ahead and say, he used to, he used to go Shabbos shopping on Sunday, Saturday night if they opened up. Oh, he still wants something else. I'm saving this for Shabbos. And then next hour, next day, he found, okay, this is for Shabbos. So basically, Bishami always ate the worst one, in other words. He always saved the best for Shabbos, and he, and he always ate the second best. And Bishama says, what are you talking about? Baruch Hashem Yom Yom. There's a mitzvah of Kavit Shabbos. It starts on Thursday night, Friday. As we know, the difference between Kavit and Oneg. Oneg is what you do in the enjoyment on Shabbos. 
covered it the preparation before. Thursday night, Friday, I start looking for my chicken, for my meat, and all that. I don't have to go shopping. So that's the, so, so 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 basically, what did we see? Be Shammai sees even during the week on Sunday, he sees the potential for covered Shabbos ready. And Be Shammai says, no, the luck is on Friday. You prepare. That's all you have to do. Reminds me of um, I once walked into a room. There were two people that were. I wouldn't say fighting, but they were, you know, fighting, kidding around, but they were over, the, 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 the serious discussion was over jelly beans. Maybe it was Simcha's Torah, I don't remember. And they were arguing as, what should you do? Let's, you know, the different colors of jelly beans, we could change it to licorice or anything else you want. You have the yellow ones, the red, I guess everyone has their favorites. Some like the red, the yellow, some hate the black, whatever, whatever it is. So the machokas was, which one should you eat first? Should you eat your favorite one first? But she saved the bets for last. So, you know, so I think, so, he, so the person, so most, I think most people saved the bets, I don't know if it's most, I haven't really did a study on it, but the person said, you know, I saved the bets for last. So the, so the person said, you showed that, what do you need to, that means you're always eating the worst one then. If you're never eating what you want to eat because you're always saving the bets for later, every time you eat something, and so the question is, so what's the pshat in the, in the Minaga Olam or the other pshat? that the person who's saving the beds for last. So apparently, what are they saying? That the anticipation of having that good one outweighs the immediate... <laughs> could, that's why, you, for we all know, from Heinz Ketchup, that famous commercial, anticipation. So they have, that's all part of it, and that's why that's the trick of all these, all these restaurants that charge you $300 a meal instead of $5, like the fast food, because fast food, okay, here's your food. Part of you sitting out there waiting half an hour for what, when's my steak coming out? Mm -hmm. It's all part of the game plan, the anticipation. So that's what Beisham, Beisham, Beisham was able to see in Kavit Shabbos even on Sunday. Beisham, the else, you know, he was on that like on Thursday night, Friday. That's another, again, so it goes down to the potential. Another Gemara he quotes is as follows. There's a Gemara about uh, Sota. The Gemara talks about a woman is suspected of committing adultery. So it's a case where she's going to the base on Mikdosh and she'll have to drink the Mesota. So she's on her way to go. And lo and behold, her husband dies. The one who accused her of being a... So the question is... So, so if the whole point of drinking is Shalom Bay is bringing them back together, right? So, you know, so she's not going to drink anymore. So the question is, what about the Ksuva? Because if a woman who commits adultery... She doesn't get the ksuva. But if she didn't come, so it's a machlokis beis hilo beis in the Mishnah, whether the woman collects the ksuva or not. What, so, um, so what's the, um, so the Gemara, you know, they tell us, so what's the machlokis here beis hilo beis The issue is like this, it's a case of Suffolk. We don't know. We don't know because she's not drinking. We don't know if she's actually guilty or not. So it's, it's a Suffolk. So, so the question is, what do we know in the case of Suffolk Mamon? Hamotzi mechavero alavarai. Who's the muksak? Whoever's the muksak gets to hold on. So Beishamai says the woman's the muksak. Why? Because shtar ome lagabos kagabos dami. Right here, the woman holding the ksuva. It's the, it's right now we view in our luck she has the money in her hands, and therefore it's like she had the money. So it's a suffix. She gets to take the money with the ksuva. Beishamai says, what are you talking about? A ksuva is a ksuva. The money's still with the man. He's the muksak. It just says I might have to give out. So Basilo says no. If you don't drink, he's not recommending to drink, but then you can't, you don't get the ksuva. So again, so what's the Nakuda? The Nakuda is how do you look at this star? Do you just see what's in front of you? It's a document saying that if X and X happens, you'll have to pay out. That's Basilo the way we go. But Beishame says no. Within this star, right now, the woman's a muksa. Or another example. The, another Gemara Mishnah, I think, in Gin says, uh, uh, a person want, went to divorce his wife. I guess, you know, had enough, tired of fighting all the time. That's it. It's not working out. Let's go to Baston. Of course, they went through all the guidance counselors and the marriage counseling, and then they decided that was it. And he gets to Baston to come up. So he says he ordered the sofa at Kosov. He, he wrote out the whole get. And, and then the Nimloch, and he changed his life. She's not so bad. Okay, I think I'll, I'll stay with that. She reminds me of a joke I always like to say is this guy who actually went to Basin and he goes and he gets a divorce. He goes and gets the get. Okay, and then he says, and he goes to Basin, I want to marry this woman. 
She's like, just divorced her. For a second wife, she's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but either way, so here are the case was he never gave to get. He changed his mind, and they lived happily ever after, I guess, until, but the husband died before her, and now she wanted to get married, and lo and behold, she wanted to marry a Kohen. So the question was, could she marry, well, what's the issue? So Basil says, of course she could marry a Kohen. They never got the, we know that luck is if you're a Grusha, you can't marry a Kohen. If you're an Almana, you can. So Basil says, <laughs> why, she's an Almana, of course she can marry. And Meshave says, no, at least it's a Suffolk enough where, since in the, exactly how they lived together earlier years, I'm not sure, but before he died. But Beishame says the, the fact that potentially he wrote to get it, everything and he didn't do it, that was enough already to put on a case where perhaps she was, a, it's a Suffolk gate and therefore she wouldn't be every, again, the, the details, a lot of details, but only, the point being is that we see the same idea. Beishame looks to reality, he never gave to get, that's it. Nothing to talk about. Beishame goes, sees deep, deep down, he goes, and he sees the potential behind everything. Or another example they give as well is um, about a woman, a Yoleda, she gives birth and she had a girl, let's say, and you know, after 80, 80 days you made Tahara, day 81 she has to bring a carbon. And again, without going into all the details, that basically she has to bring a carbon on day 81, it messes up. If she has another kid, it, it, it affects the counting next time. So the bottom line is, you want to do the carbon in 81 or else there's some consequences. So the question is, day 81 falls out on Shabbos. So you can't bring a carbon yoke, and you can't bring this carbon on Shabbos. So you have to bring it day 82. So the question is, so be, the question is, is that considered messing up whatever the consequences are? So basically, so it says no. It was still any ain't no raw. You couldn't do it on Shabbos. So the next day, that's considered raw, and therefore you're okay. Beishame says no. Even though it's only because of technicality, you couldn't bring it on Shabbos because of the blockers of. But fundamentally, this. The only day raw is day 81. Once you miss day 81, I don't care if you bring on 82 Shabbos and no Shabbos, you mess up and whatever the consequences are. Similar, like we have a similar you saw, let's say, by Mila. There's a whole discussion about Mila, whether it's Zman Grama, not Togamar, and Kedushin. So one of the questions is um, that because you can't do Mila on Mila Shalom Bizmana, you know, you can't, do on, you can't do on Shabbos. So the whole question is, what's Pshat? That you, when you can't do the meal on Shabbos, is it pshat? Is it's not the zman? Is it just temporarily suspended, or is it? So there's a whole discussion in Achronim in terms of how you define what a zman grom is or not. But either way, that's what the so Beishabe says. No, that's it. It's only a technical reason preventing you from bringing it, and therefore the person, the woman, if the next child, there are going to be consequences. Or again, a couple more examples. Another one is by Beishil or Beishamai. The luck is by truma, you have to take off, let's say I like grapes, I hate olives, which is true as well. <laughs> but the example is I, if someone loves grapes and hates olives, so let's say, you know what, I'm going to take off, I have a pile of my grapes, I'm going to take off all my truma, mice, I'll give, I'll take off all my olives, I want to keep, the luck is no, you have to take off of what you have. So what happens if, you, what about, let's say, olives and olive oil, or you know, grapes and wine, what, so Basil says no. That's the luck. It's two different entities. I can't take off one on the other. And Beishame says, yeah, you can, because in every olive, you have, basically it's olive oil, so it's considered one entity, the same you sowed. Or, um, or by, at what point does it become honey? It talks about when you take the honey out of the honeycomb, at what point does it have, does it have a shame honey? So Beishame says when you put it in the oven, you, know, you start heating it, that's the beginning of the process. And Basil says, no, when it becomes honey, it becomes honey. But, what are you talking about, for tumor? Yeah, in terms of, yeah, tumor, you know, other one is ocha, right. Mm -hmm. So they point out, so, so man, you can look at Rav Zevin has to have probably another five, ten, and of course, I'm not even sure if he has the most famous one. He left out, or maybe it's in there, I didn't okay. notice it this time, Basil or Beishamai, by Hanukkah, that's the classical Makok, it's Basil or Beishamai. Beishamai says eight to one, because in there, the first day, that's the most potential. It's, but the miracle has the potential in eight days, now seven days, I always say, um, what is the best day of a person's vacation? What's the, what's the best day of a person's vacation? Okay. Of course, the answer is the day before. Why the day before? Because the day before you're planning, okay, Disney, golfing, tennis, beach, what, this rest, but it never works out. You have a list of 100 things, you're lucky if you get 50 in. 
So that's what, so, you know, Beishama is always looking at the potential. And that's why, in fact, why is it that when, so we know, so the, I wouldn't say it on my own, but the Gemara Chazal tell us, they give us this picture of Shammai Hazakin as like this grumpy old man. Uh, you know, we have this picture of Hillel, the grandpa giving out the treat, sitting on the lap, come on, have another cookie. Okay, I'm finished with you, go back to the parents. But, you know, the, the Hillel's and that, you know, giving all the treats and all that. And you have, Shammai is this impression of like, he's a Kapton, and Rabbi, Rabbi Lezer, who was a Shammai, you know, so what is that? So, so what is the what is the connection between viewing, looking at everything, getting down to its potential, and always being, um, you know, tongue in cheek, but always being walking around miserable and upset and never happy? I'm not saying Shammai was that way, but to be that way. So, so we all know that's probably the most, you know, one of the most dangerous things is is a per. Of course, as always in life, you're going to need a balance. The person's always only looking at potential. Maybe in the next world he's right. That's why in, in the Divrei Kabbalah it says, we don't have this in regular sources, but the Divrei Kabbalah they say that in Ma later on, in most of Mashiach, later on, then we're going to accept Shammai, because we're not ready for Shammai yet. But if you're a real thinking person, Shammai makes a lot of sense. And a lot of times he's like, Din, like this is the way it should be. But you know, Hillel's more like Midas Haracha. I mean, okay, you're right, it should be that way, but let's it's the reality, we're human, we're going to make mistakes. The problem is someone who's always looking at potential, should have, could have, would have, you get nowhere in life, you walk around depressed. And you have a moral obligation to be happy, besides being, because there's nothing worse than being around someone who's a chronic complainer, he hates this, this isn't done right. In fact, speaking of that, I saw a nice child in Israel, why well, yes sir, he got an extra parsha. So many people, why was Yisrael? So some I saw some bring down. Many people offer advice. You know, this Monday morning quarterback, they're always critical, telling you, but, okay, you have anything constructive, how, how am I going to fix? Yisrael didn't just complain. He went ahead and he told Moshe, okay, this is the way you have to set up. The great, it's easy to be a Monday morning, it's easy to complain, but it's coming up with a solution. That's what you, that's what you get a parsha named after you. The same thing here, someone, if you're always looking at potential, then you're always going to be worried. I could have done, and of course, there's an essence we have to have. You have to have drive also, but doing that in extreme, you're going to end up in in that mode. In fact, we might. I'll give a sports um, much all. We're getting um. So I'll give a baseball example. Spring training is probably not far away. The Super Bowl is coming up. So there's a famous. There was a famous pitcher, Jim Cat. He was um, I think played on the White Sox, other teams, and they. I guess later on, they, they asked him, how did you become the great Jim Kidd? Like, what made you, like, what was that one thing, you know, they asked, what was that one thing that did it for you? So he said, you know, if I have to pick one thing, you know what did it? I was, I came into the major leagues, there was my first, some, my first spring training, and I meet the pitching coach, I'm not sure if it was Mel Stoudemire or not, but whoever it was, and he says to the pitching coach, says, so tell me, what do you have? What are you bringing to the plate here? He said, oh, I have a, my fastball is the best, my curveball is pretty good, slider, not too good, spitter, terrible, okay, etc. cetera, nut curve. Okay, so the pitching coach here said, okay, so what are we going to spend in the next couple of months in spring training fixing here? Yeah, I know my nut curve, my slider. He says, no, you got it all wrong. So if you want to be a star, if you want to be an all-star, you know what? You know what's going to get you through? It's your fastball. That's your pitch. That's the best pitch. If you're ever going to make it in life in baseball, it's the fastball. Of course, yeah, but but if because if you, cause if you end up working on the knuckle, you, then it's never going to be that good. In other words, the point being is that we always make we meaning we being parents, mechanchen or whoever, always make the thing. We're usually focusing on the students, chesronas or the kids, and we always seem we always seem to neglect the positives and focus on the negative. So that's what, you know, when, or the same idea with Shaq O'Neal, one of the, he's a basketball player, terrible foul shooter, but big seven footer. So again, like, he's never going to be a good foul shooter. If he spent his whole day practicing his foul shot, it's not going to get any better, maybe a little bit. He has to work on rebounding, on stuffing, whatever he's doing, a short. The point is you always have to, so the problem is when you're always looking at potential, you, you, just, you fail to see the person in front of you, and you, and you know, you, you don't see the other side. That's how Rav Zevin explains. That's you saw all these machlokasim, beis Hillel, beis Shammai, in terms of getting down.
to the potential. That's why Shammai was a cop to me the Sadir, and and they still a more pragmatic going. Of course, you have to work on everything, but at the point the the point we're making is if you worked on every pitch, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have any of them. The point is you don't. Of course, everything is going. You're not going to have time to do everything in Olam Hazeh. So you have to learn to prioritize and pick out what you know, what your strengths are, what your kids, students, etc. And that, and that tells, and then and that's perhaps we could say the same yisod here by two bishvat. At two bishvat, that's the yisod be shilah be shamai be shamai galis rov gishamim. The majority rate. Okay, right now this is Rosh Hashanah. There's no not no fruit or nothing. Rosh Hashanah lilanos. And Beisilel, that the Meiri writes, no, it's until the fruit actually starts growing on it, that you go with the practicality. Like we had the examples of, we had the the case with the when does the fish be, when does the food when does the fish become food? Uh, what bracha on Havdola Bashabara Moresh Bara Moresh? We had the example of Shammai Shabbos shopping while we go on. and then we had um, the, we had the example of someone going to. Someone going to court and writing out a gap and not actually giving it. According to Beisham, maybe she can't marry a Kohen. Or we had the age, the Sota, whether she gets the Ksuva, Sharomus, or Gabos. And the cases with the honey from the honey cup, at what point is all these things are going down that Beisham um, takes out takes out through. And that, you know, that seems to be the Makhogas here as well. Where is this the Miri? The Miri is it's in Rosh Hashanah by Thingy Dawid over there. Oh, right, by, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Gemara where it talks about. Because the Kabbalah doesn't tell us what Basilo says, so Biri suggests this is um, that's the Biri's Chiddush by um, by Basilo.